Hey everybody, welcome to the first video on my brand new YouTube channel. And it starts right away with an interesting question about Nuxt 3's runtime config feature. I saw a few messages on the Nuxt Discord about, okay, hey, I have some API keys. Um, how do I handle them with the front end? How can I actually share them with my application without exposing them to people? And some people are saying, oh yeah, runtime config is a great tool for that, a great feature, which is definitely true. But coming to the conclusion, um, that, oh, runtime config exposes them to the front end, even though I may not want to. And that all led to the question, is Nuxt 3's runtime config unsafe? And that's what we'll discuss in this video. To be very precise here, the quick answer is no. Don't worry, it's not unsafe. Definitely not. Unless... Oh well. You don't know what you're doing and you misuse it. Then of course that can happen. But to ensure this will not happen, we'll take a look at two use cases you can use runtime config together with some API keys for. But before diving into the two use cases we'll take a look at, let's discuss what runtime config actually is. And to put it very simple, it is a way to provide values to your Nuxt application without rebuilding it. So providing it at runtime when you, for example, start your server. And to do that, you first have to define the values in your Nuxt config. So there you set up the runtime config option and define them there. And they can be nested, it's very fine, but they have to be serializable. And what's the cool part here is that all these runtime config variables, they can be overridden through environment variables. So that's very common, right? You pass your end variables to your application. In this case, Nuxt will pick them up if you define them before in the Nuxt runtime config and then set the values during the runtime when you start your application. It's very important though, you always need a Nuxt prefix because otherwise it could come to either security issues or also clashing with other end variables and we don't want that. So for example, my key, all camel case, is then represented by Nuxt underscore my underscore key, as you can see here. All right, um, so that's runtime config. And now let's dive into two scenarios. So the two scenarios are first, you use runtime config to deliberately share your API keys with the front end. And the second scenario we'll take a look at is how to actually not do that and share your API keys, not with the front end, but only with the server part. And the first use case might sound a little bit weird, right? Like, yeah, okay, why would I even wanna share some keys with the front end part, right? But Trust me, it's valid, it makes sense. Um, but first we have to differentiate between two categories of keys, right? So we have private or secret keys, and of course you don't wanna share these with your front end, right? Absolutely not. But then there are public or application keys, and actually these are necessary to share with the front end, otherwise the service you might use there, well, you can't use it without a key. So taking a look at the first use case, well, if you think about it for a second, it might sound a bit counterintuitive or even weird, right? Why would I share my keys with the front end? But trust me, it's valid and maybe you already did that. So um, of course there are certain types of keys that you don't wanna share, right? The secret or private keys, you should never share them with your front end. But there's a second category of API keys, which are public or application keys. And these you actually have to share with the front end so they can be included to the request to the service you wanna use. As an example, you can mention something like Google reCAPTCHA or also Stripe. While Stripe has a public and a private key, so one you should not share at all, and one you definitely should share with your front end, Google reCAPTCHA just has one single key, which is the application or public key. And to actually use your reCAPTCHA, you have to provide that key. So um, that brings us to the next question. Okay, how can I avoid that just people reuse this key on their website? And the answer is, in your code, you really can't because everything in the front end is human readable. So it's the platform's duty to protect or to give options to protect. So for example, in Stripe, it's not really necessary because you have a private key and without the private key, the public key won't work at all. For Google reCAPTCHA though, where you just have one key, the platform, in this case, Google, provides some options to limit and to restrict the key. So in this case, a list of domains which actually Google allows it to use on. Same for other services like Google Maps and various different ones. 
Okay, so now we know these are fine to share, but how do we do that? And runtime config is the key here. Actually, to be more precise, the public part of the runtime config. So runtime config, and then there a nested public object. There you can, for example, put in the recapture key and then use an environment variable to save and set the value and share it with your application. After setting up your runtime config and defining the variables in the public nested object, you're good to go and use the use runtime composable in your components, pages, or wherever you like. For example, to get the Google Maps API key and to display an iframe, or to just start up your Stripe instance. Yeah, and then you're good to go. Um, here is also one example uh, of a project of mine where I did exactly that with um, a Google Maps API key. I defined it in the runtime config, and then in another component, I just got the key out of the use runtime composable. Easy, right? Okay, and now we dealt with the obvious case. Great, we share some API keys that are meant to be shared. But what is with the others? What is with a key for, like, let's say, the Cloudflare KV storage or um, private Stripe key? What do we do with them? And once again, runtime config is the tool we have to use. But this time, we should definitely not put them in the public part because they shouldn't be public. The problem is, how does the front end get the keys, but also shouldn't? So there's a bit of conflict here because everything on the front end is human readable, right? But the front end can't work without the keys, at least in some scenarios. What? The answer is, <laughs> there is no super satisfying solution for that problem, except building your own API endpoint. That way you can hide the token or key from the user, so the user will not be able to get the token. And you can also control the data that's returned by the API endpoint. So in your server folder, you would create a new um, API and then let's say uh, token result.ts. And in there, you define an event handler and use the key uh, that we define the runtime config in a bit. Do your API call through a fetch call, and then you can choose what kind of data you want to return or not. The problem with this is that yeah, the user still gets the data and can still query that API endpoint on their own, right? So that's still tricky. You can, of course, apply rate limiting and way more to ensure that it can't be abused too much. But the safest option here is actually to use pre-rendering. Because if you use pre-rendering, then that API endpoint might not be even needed after you build your application. Why? Because all the data is statically available and Nuxt will actually save the state coming from the API call if you use, use fetch or use async data to retrieve them. Uh, and that way, the API might not, might not be needed at all. The only exception is when you actually need to query it, for example, to load more data and, well, that's not saved then, um, or if you need to load real-time or fresh data. In that case, you don't really have another option except leaving that API expo uh, endpoint exposed and either go with user authentication, so you can say like, okay, users abusing them, they won't be able to use it, apply rate limiting, and so on, and so on. You could also, as another option, use the experimental server components, but in the end, the attack vector and issues will be the same because the data will still be there, this time returned in the HTML, and not as JSON, but it's still human readable. Okay, and the keys, as I said before, you put them in runtime config, but this time not in public. So let's say runtime config, and then you define a secret key variable. Once again, that's overridable with next underscore secret underscore key during runtime, and you're good to go to provide them. And in that way, on the client side, you're not able to read the key at all. And on the server side, you can. I would, as I said, recommend to use that key only in your API endpoint, because Nothing stops you in theory from reading that on the initial request from your server side render application, but then it will only work on the initial request and not when you navigate from page A to B again. So it seems like a solution, but it's not really feasible and actually causes problems with your app. So I'd suggest to stick with the proposed API endpoint solution or use server components and if possible, use pre-rendering. Also, maybe only for the sites that need exactly that API endpoint. So that way, it's definitely safe. All right, time for the summary. So we have two types of API keys. 
the public or application keys are there, are meant to be shared with the front end. You put them in runtime config.public and then you're good to go. You can use use runtime config on the client or server to get them, all fine. As an example, the public Stripe key, story block access token, or the Google Maps key. And on the platform, you can choose how to protect the keys. For example, saying only certain domains are allowed to use it if necessary. And then we have the private keys or secret keys, and you should not share them with the front end under any circumstances. So you put them under runtime config, but not in the public part. And you can use an API endpoint solution to hide them. And that way avoid that people use them on their own sites and maybe abuse more privilege that the token has than just returning the data that you want. And also you have control over which data will be returned. So to iterate over that, once again, the next runtime config feature is not unsafe. It is totally safe. And now that you know what you're doing with it, you won't be worried about leaking keys anymore. Whew. All right. If there's anything else what you're curious about, maybe related runtime config, other next features, or whatever comes to your mind, if you have any questions left, please write a comment, drop them right there, and I'm very happy to answer them. I'm also taking a look at all the examples and the links to the documentation that I've linked in the video description once again, if you want to have a bit more in-depth information. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, happy hacking, and see you next time. <laughs>